are sorting themselves out. A lot of people thought, okay, more attention on the lower weight classes and young Kodo will rapidly emerge as a big star. Hasn't really happened. What's holding him back? You can't just designate a box office star. Kodo is a dynamic, well-schooled young fighter. Stopped 11 out of his last 12 mostly solid opponents, or maybe it was 12 out of 11. But he hasn't yet become the second coming of his countryman, of Felix Trinidad. That's going to take some kind of special showing. Some showdown, perhaps by next year, some melodramatic moment. The question tonight is whether Tories is capable of making him make some big moment happen. Torres replaces within the past three weeks Gianluca Bronco, an Italian fighter whom you saw last year against Arturo Gatti. Bronco, more of a straight-up counterpuncher, was regarded as perhaps an easier opponent for young Cotto than will be the case with Torres, who's unbeaten with 27 knockouts and 28 fights. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for Miguel Cotto and Eduardo Torres at 140 pounds. And you can see that Cotto gives up or actually is one year younger at age 24. They're equal in height at 5'8". Cotto with a half-inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in at 140 pounds in New Jersey. We do not have unofficial weights coming out of the dressing room tonight. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Miguel Cotto Ricardo Torres fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round. Clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim! Here comes Eduardo Torres. He faced Miguel Cotto in the amateurs. Cotto won the fight, but for his part, Cotto says, hey, this is a good fighter. He has fast hands. He throws combinations. It's a real test for me. And he's become more of a professional fighter since Cotto saw him. The most spectacular young prospect in the middleweight classes outside of Cotto is a 21-year-old fighter from Colombia named Joel Julio, who is simply liquid dynamite and coming toward the welterweight class with a lot of power and speed. If Torres is half as good as is his countryman, Joel Julio, then Cotto could have quite a lot of battle on his hands tonight. Torres fought on August 5, scored a fifth round knockout on that night. So as the result of that activity, he regarded himself in good enough shape to take this fight on three weeks notice. Actually, it was a third round knockout on August 5. In Puerto Rico, by the way. First time he's fought outside of Colombia. The first 27 of his 28 fights all taking place in his native Colombia. First time fighting in the United States, George. First time in a big arena like this. How intimidating can it be? Well, it can be intimidating, but it can also be the chance of a lifetime. And you got to look at it like that. Jump in and have your part of it. So now Torres will wait as the almost preternaturally calm Miguel Cotto begins to make his way to the ring. Cotto, like the man you watched last week, Marco Antonio Barrera, fights with a poker-faced expression. So far, Larry Merchant has faced a variety of technical challenges and has handled them all. And also what is impressive about him, Jim, is just how well-grounded and stable he seems to be. Sometimes a hot young fighter comes along, he gets to this point, he's challenging the world, he wants to fight Sugar Ray Robinson, he wants to fight Shane Mosley, he wants to fight uh, Mayweather. He just trusts the brain trust around him to make those decisions. The decisions have been good ones. He's made them all stand up. In his last fight at Madison Square Garden, Cotto used his brilliant counter-punching technique 
to avenge his Sydney Olympics loss to an Uzbeki fighter named Mohamed Abdullayev, who was coming forward and landing hard punches. Cotto expects once again to be the counterpuncher against Torres tonight. They're both in the ring. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, courtesy of Duva Boxing, K2 Promotions, Top Rank Incorporated, and in association with Caesars Atlantic City, welcome to Atlantic City's Boardwalk Hall and an evening of world-class professional boxing for your entertainment. All bouts sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., World Boxing Organization President Francisco Paco Barcarcel. The three judges at ringside scoring this first bout will be Chuck Jampa, Julie Letterman, and Dennis Nelson. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action inside the ring, David Fields. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Atlantic City, New Jersey, courtesy of Caesars Atlantic City, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Light Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue, yellow, and red, official weight, 140 pounds. A perfect professional record consisting of 28 bouts, 28 victories, including 26 knockouts. From Barranquilla, Colombia, the undefeated WBO number one ranked challenger in the world, Ricardo Mochuelo. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing green, official weight, also 140 pounds. Also a perfect professional record, consisting of 24 bouts, 24 victories, including 20 knockouts. Thomas y Caballeros de Caguas, Puerto Rico, the reigning, defending, undefeated, WBO light welterweight champion of the world, Miguel Cotto. Check it out. Miguel Ricardo, I'm scheduled to box 12 rounds for the WBO Junior Welterweight Championship over the world. I'm going over the rules in your dressing room. I expect you to obey my commands at all times. Most of all, protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. Touch gloves, brother. Jim, in the last two shows we've had, or two of the last three, I should say, we've had substitutes come in and knock off top young featherweight Rocky Juarez, and then Eric Morales. Who knows what we have here? They know each other from their one amateur meeting. So far, Cotto is 2-0 and against former Olympic opponents, having beaten both Kelson Pinto of Brazil and Mohamed Abdullayev of Uzbekistan. George, did you ever get a chance to... Uh, fight in the professionals, any of the guys that you fought at the Mexico City Olympics in 1968? Not in the Olympics, but some that I did fight in the uh, amateur, coming up to the AAU and National Golden Gloves. But that doesn't mean anything. It was an entirely different thing, right? Now it's all for the gold this time, the real gold that you put in your pocket. Nice little left hook to the body by Cotto. Now, Tor Torres has got to get some respect early because Cotto is well polished. Take the polish off by making him hurt. That's what he's got to do. Get out there and land a big shot. Let him know that my record is not padded. I can knock you out, too. Well, if Cotto has a statement punch, it is that left hook to the body. He sledgehammered Abdullayev with it in the late rounds, and you can see him throwing it again with conviction there. So far, Torres has decided to back up here in round one. That runs counter to what Cotto had expected because he thought that Torres would try to attack him. 
Torres seems to be looking to throw. Left hook puts him down after a perfect counter straight right hand. And Torres is up in a hurry. But that was just a perfectly thrown combination by Miguel Cotto, who answered a right hand by Torres with a body shot and then finished off with the left hook. Yeah, that's I, th th I thought part of that was his balance. He was a little off balance. He doesn't look really hurt, does he, George? I agree. He was getting ready to, getting ready to do something himself and got caught in the midst of it. But you're a long way from home, and this big crowd is noisy. The corner's going to have a... Oh, oh, and... Torres hurts Cotto with a left hook there. Miguel Cotto electing to trade punches with a guy whom he had knocked down. Both George and Larry making the point that Torres wasn't all that hurt. And now Cotto knows it too, as he was rocked by a counter left hook. Now Torres has got his respect. Now it's an even fight. From this point on, he's as much at home as Cotto is. Cotto going back to the left hook to the body and landing it right on the belt line. That's some unusual punching power in this little frame that Torres had. Doesn't look like that kind of power, but his hands evidently has got it. When he throws the punches with conviction, it looks like he was trying to throw that right hand over the top. Some guys got power in their hands. You look for the shoulders to a perfect delivery. It doesn't happen, but they touch you with those hands, and it hurts. And that's what I think Torres has. You remember that Chop Chop Crawley hurt Cotto with a right hand, and perhaps Torres is trying to duplicate that. So both fighters made an impression in round one. When we go to the corner where they speak Spanish, our interpreter is Jerry Olaya. Very well, very well, Miguel. You okay? He only has that right hand, that's it. Work it, work it. Counter punch. Okay? All right? Good. All right, now, now it's our turn. Here's the knockdown punch. A straight left, followed by a half left, with Torres out of uh, range. But there you saw the right hand that splayed Cotto's legs, looking dangerous for a moment. Power shots in round one. Cotto 12 out of 36, 33 percent. Torres 8 out of 31, 26 percent. Total punches. Cotto landing more, 21 out of 61. Both guys momentarily rocked the opponent in round one. Now Cotto takes Torres to the ropes, trades with him again, and once again, Torres lands enough to back Cotto off. Who's hurt? It's, it's Cotto who is hurt. And he's hurt again by a straight right hand. And Cotto tries to grab and hold as Torres continues to throw. Cotto wobbly. Torres has a huge chance here for a big upset. Cotto trying to fight back. Going into a crouching position, but now he gets caught flush with a right hand. Torres has Cotto in big trouble. Cotto no longer trying to hold on. For some reason, Miguel Cotto feels like he should trade. George, it's exactly the wrong thing to do. No, when you're in with a puncher, he's got that many knockouts. You don't play the punching game with him. You play hit and defense. Cotto is wobbly, and the ropes hold him up for the moment. He almost went to the canvas on that shot. Cotto reaching to grab again as another left hook strapes him. Cotto Plenty showing of time in the round. Cotto showing tremendous determination here because he's plainly dazed, buzzed, hurt, trying to pull himself together with a minute and a half to go in the round. He gets ripped again and down goes Miguel Cotto. This he may need more than anything else. That was a pull down. Let me tell you, he was hit with some harder shots early on, but this time he was actually wrestled down. Uh, it looked like he was off balance, but from those blows. Big left hook by Torres. This is going to raise a lot of questions about Miguel Cotto, who was hurt by DeMarcus Corley, not all that big a puncher in Puerto Rico. Was not badly hurt by a harder puncher named Muhammad Abdullah in Madison Square Garden. But here, has come, he has been wobbled three times. Cotto has come back with two stiff punches. Now it's Torres who wobbles after a right hand by Cotto. 
And Cotto wants to press the advantage now. Cotto is not the harder puncher tonight. He can mix it up. He's got to make certain he's delivered with his shots and keep his defenses in position. It's Foreman Lyle at 140 pounds. Any punch can take you down. A gunfight in Atlantic City. Trading shots, Miguel Cotto and Ricardo Torres. What happened? A guy steps in as a replacement. You take him for granted. He's got the power. You don't think that your promoters will actually match you with an equally puncher, and you got the surprise of your life. Both Cotto fighters survived. hurt in that round. Both of them, but Cotto was the one who was almost gone early in the round and managed to weather the storm somehow. In Taiwan, I think I can Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. I'm about to Axel, move your head. Move your, move your waist. Move your top. Come on, move it. And the new champion. Vivo. Up, up. Right there, that left hook is the punch that hurt Cotto. Torrey's tearing after him to try to finish him. There was the knockdown. So now Cotto has a knockdown over Torres in round one. Torres has knocked Cotto down in round two. As I say, it's Foreman Lyle at 140 pounds. At, in that round, Torres landed 39 out of 89 power shots. Miguel came back to land 19 power punches of his own. George Cotto was trying to hold on early in the round and then seemed to forget to do so. What, what happened is when you're in good condition, evidently Cotto is, you can instinctively hold on, move out of the way. He's saved by his condition tonight. He was hit with some hard shots. So Cotto's confidence has been rocked by hard shots from Torres in both rounds one and two. They've traded knockdowns, and now Cotto will try to reestablish technical class, technical superiority. Cotto is the more polished of the two. But he's still getting hit with a lot of what Torres throws. Trading left hooks at close range, and Cotto isn't necessarily winning the punching battle. There's the left hook to the body, which momentarily stops Torres in his tracks. When you're a big puncher, it's hard to imagine when someone is hitting you equally as hard. You just can't believe it. And that's the co position Cotto is in. He cannot believe it. Now here's a low blow stoppage to allow Torres to regain his equilibrium after Cotto landed one below the belt. Miguel Cotto bowing at Eduardo Torres as if to say sorry for that, or Ricardo Torres, I should say. But when you see a puncher go to the corner and take a little rest in himself voluntarily, that means he's tired. I, I, should, I agree with you, George. When you got the big power, it's like, so what? Give me another round. So what? I got you. I agree that, that I think he got, he, he almost uh, took a, uh, diminished his own conditioning in the last round, which he had such a big round. So take another rest. <laughs> oh, but the body shots. Man. Body shots by Cotto backing Torres up. Torres hoping the referee will stop Cotto from landing him right on the belt line. That was a low blow yet again. And now here comes either a warning or a point deduction. No, it's not a deduction. It's just a warning. So two warnings now for Cotto. Next one will almost certainly be a point deduction. Quick, crisp left hook inside by Cotto. Torres comes back with the right and the left. Cotto driving him into the ropes. That left hook to the body is turning the fight around, George. And I like it because the referee has tried to make him decide not, not to throw his left hooks to the body. He didn't get deterred. He's going right back to it. Well, we saw that already that Cotto has a second gear. We haven't seen whether his opponent can come back. His opponent's got one good right hand. I can tell you that, though. And bring him back. I think if Cotto remembers to go to the body, he will eventually out-physical Torres. But if he wants to keep trading upstairs, he could find himself looking up at the lights again. There's the left hook to the body, which is going to 
make this Miguel Cotto's fight if, in fact, he's able to put his imprint on it. Firing upstairs now. The Torres has handled the chin punches more easily than the one that goes directly to the liver. And can Cotto contemptuously throws Torres to the canvas to end the round. Immediately following tonight's live boxing, stick around for the premiere of Countdown to Tarver Jones 3, a documentary-style look at the lives of Antonio Tarver and Roy Jones, rivals since childhood. Next Saturday on HBO Pay-Per-View, they fight for the third time to settle once and for all who's better. Low blows by Cotto. Just south of the border, that one. On the hip, that one. I've come to the conclusion, Jim, that we need more of these late substitutes. <laughs> this is tremendous excitement. I mean, obviously, Castillo Corrales ranks in a class by itself so far as the fight of the year, but these first three rounds would be a candidate for fight of the year thus far if it continues this way. Cotto landed 38 power shots in round three. Harold, how do you have it so far? <laughs> okay, Jim. 28, 27, two rounds to one, Miguel Cotto. Jim, I gotta tell you, in round one, I scored a 10-8 Cotto, but I gotta tell you, Ricardo Torres did come back to stagger him. A judge could go 10-9 on that stagger. In the second round, Miguel Torres, uh, Ricardo Torres scored a clean knockdown. I went 10-8 Ricardo Torres because he knocked Cotto off his feet. But in the third round, I actually thought that Ricardo Torres faked it twice. He wanted to see, you know, if David Fields would take away a point. Those shots were on, were on the, uh, the, the name, you know, where his name is. They, they just weren't low. And I am told that our interpreter, Jerry Olaya, hold the, heard the people in Torres' corner between rounds telling their fighter, if he hits you low again, go down and make an act out of it. Try to get a point deduction. Which makes sense, incidentally. It only makes sense if you don't have a lot of dignity. Hard right hand to the body. Cotto's body punches are gradually breaking Torres down. Oh, good body shots right to the body, which is seldom seen right under that arm, left armpit. Yeah, you're right, George. I agree. It makes a certain competitive sense, but not honorable sense. No, I mean, this is all about honor when it all boils down to it. Win, lose, or draw. Get some honor into it. Another body it. shot by Cotto. Gradually hammering away at Torres' rib cage to try to take away the fire, which gave him so much trouble in round two. Got to respect though Torres, though. He's got some right hand. Cotto is starting to relax a little bit, and that's when the trouble starts. Left hook to the body, landing with considerable frequency. And that's what led to the delayed reaction knockdown oh, of Torres. George, six, he just can't handle seven. the liver shot. Oh, that body. Oh, I'm not sure anybody can, Jim. <laughs> when you found a good meat, you go right back to that grocery counter. And that's There's the left doing. hook to the body again, setting up a big left hook upstairs. Miguel Cotto is starting to have his way with... Eduardo Torres. The jab Eduardo has been Torres. a little more effective now. Cotto is jabbing. That jab is knocking. That stiff jab is knocking Torres' head back. Everything becomes more effective once he starts to land that hook to the body. And Cotto is trying to get him to throw his jab a little bit so he can counter underneath him. Breathe. Breathe. Keep breathing. Breathe deeply. That's it. He's ready. He's ready to go. He's ready to go. Jab in the right. Jab in the right. Cut off the ring. Don't follow him. Cut off the ring. Slowly. Face yourself. Did that body punch knock Torres down or did he go down deliberately? 
in order to get the attention of the referee. That's what it appeared to do right there. If he was doing it to get the attention of the referee, he waited too long. He waited a couple seconds and thought about it, I guess. But one way or another, the left hook to the body led to the knockdown, which gave Miguel Cotto a 10-8 round and perhaps a significant working margin on the scorecards as Harold Letterman in the first round, as Harold Letterman pointed out, the first round could have been 10-8 Cotto or it could have been 10-9 Torres. When you're a good fighter and you take a replacement in, instead of a, another good fighter, you're at the disadvantage because you're not prepared for this guy. But then on the other hand, a good fighter only get these kind of fights when they catch him out of shape. And that's probably why he's got that fight. So the longer this fight goes for Torres, the better for Cotto because he's caught him by surprise. Well, you can't the classic say no. case in recent years, of course, was Lennox Lewis, Vitaly Klitschko. Having switched from Kirk Johnson to Vitaly Klitschko with about two weeks to go, Lennox Lewis wound up in an entirely different style of fight. What a left hook to the body. Two in a row. Vicious. And Lennox had to survive a night when he was clearly not at his best. Cotto's going through very much the same thing here. But he's putting his imprint on the fight with that brutal left hook to the body. Torres lands a couple shots upstairs. Cotto just kind of biding his time and waiting. Oh, Cotto badly hurt with a right hand that busted him straight on the top. Cotto focusing too much on the left hook to the body. And there Torres saw the chance to unload upstairs with the right. You just can't relax with a genuine puncher. Each time you got to realize I can't get hit. You're going to stand in front of him. Oh, Torres front. busting Cotto again with the right. And now Cotto holding on. Cotto backs away again without holding on. He's hurt the same way he was in the second round. If Cotto doesn't grab and hold, he may soon go down from a straight right hand. What we're getting in the 140-pound fight is what we're expecting and hoping for in the heavyweight fight. Yeah, you're not going to see this in the heavyweights. <laughs> Knockdowns in almost every round. Huge punches landing over and over. Miguel Cotto's been batted around the ring from pillar to post by right hands from Ricardo Torres here. And Cotto bought himself some time by throwing Torres into the ring post. And it was real smart, Cotto. You get his fault when you get a guy staggering. Go as far away from him as you can and recover yourself. Make him walk to you. Stop things. Over and over and over in this fight, it appears, Miguel Cotto has unwisely elected to trade upstairs with a fighter who has faster hands. You just cannot allow yourself to be hit by Torres. That's the problem. If you're going to duck, duck. If you're going to dodge, dodge. But don't get hit thinking it's not going to hurt you. Blood streaming from Cotto's mouth as he tries to sledgehammer Torres with the left hook to the body again to slow down the Colombian's assault. Tremendous round for Ricardo Torres, who once again hammered Miguel Cotto with power shots. Come on, are you crazy? Don't exchange punches with him, you crazy? You leave yourself open. He wants to catch you with that right hand. Listen, first with the left, and then come in over. But pressure him, pressure him, push him back. Torres looking tired from that vicious body attack from Cotto suddenly exploded again with a second win and eight or ten or twelve more punches. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's been a wild seesaw battle through five rounds for Miguel Cotto in the blue and white striped trunks and Ricardo Torres in the yellow and blue and orange trunks. You can see Harold Letterman's scorecard with Cotto one point ahead through the fifth round. Some scorecards, scorecards could have Torres ahead depending on how the first round was scored. Power shots in round five. Ricardo Torres took the lead, landing 19 of them, and many of them very hard blows. Cotto is having to stagger around and wait a little bit, and this is what you don't want to do. You have Torres on the move, 
You got him a little tired, you can't give him a break because all he does is suck up the oxygen and come back and hurt you. You can't just stand there and not do anything. You heard Evangelist Dakota, Dakota's uncle and trainer in the corner saying, what in the world are you doing trading with him? You're leaving yourself open. He didn't get hurt by trading. He got hurt by just laying on the ropes waiting for a shot. These are two unbeaten young fighters. Neither one thinks they can lose. Neither one wants to yield to the other. Both looked a little discouraged between rounds. Now, this is a fight that goes to the corner. Who can refresh these guys? When they go to the corner, you don't want to hear a lot of information. Just get Cotto back awake. And the same with Tories. Who's going to refresh him? Make him get his energy back round by round. Make that minute rest. Is this the kind of fight in which a trainer should be careful about trying to make tactical adjustments because so much is going on for the fighter? That's right. Get some ice down. Even lower them into his cup. Ice behind the neck. Rub him. And make him confident. Don't talk too much. Should Cotto be boxing more? Well, Cotto is doing his best because he's, at the same point, he's recovering from shots, too. Corey just, just cannot stand in front of this guy and not do anything. That's what Cotto can, cannot do. Don't stand in front of him and not do something. So far, Torrey apparent, appears to be taking a blow in this round. Torres more given to fighting in spurts. Cotto more likely to fight the full three minutes of every round, at least so far. Everything is fine as long as Cotto is active. When you get inactive, this is when Torres decides, I'm going to hit you with something, and it hurts. As you can see, it's round six of a scheduled 12. This has been the least active of the six rounds so far, largely because, as Larry Merchant pointed out, it appears Ricardo Torres is trying to get a rest. The difference is Torres can take Cotto's best shot. Cotto staggers when he hits. Well, just I as you wrong. say that. What else was I ever wrong? Just as you say that, a straight right hand puts Torres on one knee and gives Cotto a further scoring margin in the fight, which could turn out to be critical. What we have here, folks, is Hurricane Torres and Hurricane Cota colliding. Don't talk about hurricanes <laughs> or tornadoes. Our society is wearing them like a rash right now. You got to react, man. You understand? He's going to come on top of you. He's going to come for you. Move yourself. Move yourself and be precise with your punches. Up with the hooks. And then throw your direct hit. Throw your... Late in the round. Right hand cocked by Cotto. Short left. Hard right. Two point round. He just tapped him with the left. Just enough to just get his attention. That he used to cruising toward winning the round, but as Larry made the, the, the point, critical point, knee went to the canvas. Two point round for Cotto. In that round, Torres, trying to get a rest, landed only three of 34 punches. Cotto, 24 out of 61. A little bit more of a working margin, perhaps, as Cotto gets hammered again. We're about to go to Harold Letterman's scorecard and can't go because the action is fast and furious as they trade punches at close range yet again. Round seven of a scheduled 12, and both guys still looking for the knockout every minute of the way. As Torres has said, if you're going to lose, I may as well lose a fight, not just lose a boxing match. It's a fight now. Let's see if we can slip in the Letterman scorecard real fast here while they catch a breather. Okay. Harold, how do you have it so far? Okay, 56-53, four rounds to two, Miguel Cotto. It's a matter of who gets off the first big shot first in each round. But in any case, in round five, I certainly gave Ricardo Torres a 10-8 round without a knockdown because he had Miguel Cotto staggered the entire round. But Cotto came back and knocked him down in a sixth. So out of six rounds, I got five of them scored 10 to eight, and only one round scored 10 to nine. Incredible. Since the early exchange in this round, Cotto has been able to control Torres with his jab, his left hook to the body, and some straight right hands. Cotto is making a mistake. You land your left hook, you got to come back with your right and another hook. You just can't stop at three shots. This guy will catch you right at, as you finish that left hook. 
Goto catching Torres on the end of a punch again, and down goes Ricardo Torres. Showing extreme fatigue just before that combination put him on the canvas. And physically getting worn down, and referee David Fields is going to stop it. Miguel Cotto survives a life and death challenge from Ricardo Torres. Tim, a half hour ago, I speculated on whether Torres could make Cotto make something happen. Give us one of those melodramatic fights that people will remember. This is the fight of his life so far. It shows some real internal fortitude. It shows more than just boxing ability and punching ability. George, does every great young prospect need a fight like this to help define? you got to help that because the corner can tell you only so much. You've got to know what you have inside. Tonight, Cotto knows what he has inside. I like that. Miguel Cotto survives in a fight in which he faced some of his worst and most difficult moments. Here's the last knockdown, George, as he backed Torres into a corner and looked for his best stuff. Oh, he keeps punching. Even though he's in a chance of him getting knocked down again by in those exchanges, Cotto didn't stop. I and like that. And once again, the decisive punch in the combination. Watch the left hook to the body that finishes this up. Right hand. One more time to the chest with that left hook. And down he went. And it was all in exchange. He didn't lose his bravery. I like that. Most people get scared. I'm not going to take a chance. He took a chance even when his corner told him, don't exchange. He did it. You think he has a questionable chin, or was he in against a great puncher? Oh, you win with a puncher like that. That guy can hit Torres. Where in the world did he come from? Columbia with 26 knockouts in 28 fights. I'd like and to now see he's him got prepared his first in good shape and prepared. I think we probably will. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the details on the TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 1 minute 52 seconds. Of round number seven, the winner by knockout victory and still the undefeated WBO light welterweight champion of the world, Chicago Puerto Rico Miguel Cotto. You could take all the previous nervous moments of Miguel Cotto's 24-fight career, add them all up, and they wouldn't count for half of what he went through in this fight tonight. CompuBox numbers in a slugfest. Cotto landing 93 more, throwing 31 more, landing at a significantly higher percentage, but Torres landed some massive shots. So the young star from Puerto Rico, so quiet, so composed, had to face his most difficult trials as a professional. And thinking back to George Foreman and Ron Lyle, it's the kind of thing that leaves an imprint on you for a long time. George is still talking about Lyle. Yeah, I don't Let's like see it. how long Cotto's going to talk about Torres as Larry Merchant is with the winner. Thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Miguel. Were you expecting such a back and forth hard fight. No tan tan rudo, tan difícil. Pero sí me alegró, me alegró ese tipo de pelea. Me alegró este tipo de pelea para que la gente vea que no solo Miguel Cotto el que da, sino el que recibe y sabe dar también. Glad we had this type of fight because it showed the public that I can hit and that I can assimilate punches. Were you thinking as you were taking punches from him, this is my great test. I must show myself and the world what I am made of. Cuando recibías esos golpes, estabas pensando en esos momentos que esta es mi gran prueba y tengo que demostrarle al mundo de lo que el tesón que tengo, lo que estoy hecho. No, siempre estuve consciente de que de que había que ganar esta pelea. Hemos trabajado muy fuerte para estar en el sitio donde estamos y no vamos a dejarlo perder. I was always conscious of the fact that we've worked very hard to be at this spot, and it was a tough fight, and it was impossible to lose. We needed to win. At some point, he looked tired. And it looked like you thought, now I have him. But then he came back at you again. No, were, sí, no. were you shocked at that? Lo vi, por eso fue que volví, comencé a atacar de nuevo. 
porque lo vi cansado, pero luego metió buenos golpes. Me tambaleó de nuevo, pero supimos rematarlo nuevamente. That, that's why I attacked and that's why I came back. And he was able at some moment in time to come back and, and, and gain some life, but I went back for him again. Were you ever close to being knocked out? En mi vida, en mi vida me habían tirado, en mi vida me habían eh, derribado a la lona. In Siempre my life, I was ever knocked down. This is always the first time. And, and what does it tell you about yourself now as a fighter? No, bueno, hemos, hemos, hemos recorrido todas las facetas que puede tener un boxeador. Sobre el ring, bajo el ring, sobre la lona, de todas las facetas que puede tener un boxeador. We've lived all the facets of a boxer that a boxer can have. Uh, on the ring, uh, against the floor, looking up at the lights. We've lived it all. Thank you very much for a great fight, Gracias Miguel. Gracias a todos. Jim? All right, thank you very much. Well, uh, the official scores at the moment of the knockout, Cotto was ahead and moving away, 56-53, 57-53, 57-53. And check this, George. Two weeks ago, Harold Letterman unofficially and Julie Letterman officially scored the Eric Morales fight uh, against the guy who beat him, Zahir Rahim, and they both had the same score. I saw it. Tonight, after six rounds here, Julie Letterman scoring officially, Harold Letterman unofficially, they had the same score. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not doing hand signals or anything like that. It just is what it is. It's in the DNA. So young Cotto learns a lesson perhaps about paying attention to what happens when you get a substitute opponent, but survives and probably it's all good, right? Survive. That's what he did. It reminded me of a young Joe Lewis. Max Mellon had him down, looked out. You thought it was all over. He came back and became even a greater fighter. This guy has the Cotto has the same kind of spirit. And a tremendous left hook to the body, of course. And, Larry, before we move away from that fight, will this do more to diminish Cotto's reputation because he took so much damage and, and went down, or will it do more to help his reputation because he survived in a brutal fight? He just became a Puerto Rican gaddy. How can that hurt him? <laughs> <laughs> it can't, I, I suppose. What you're saying is he's a bigger star than ever. Absolutely. Let's take a look at some upcoming boxing programs which you're going to want to keep on your boxing calendar. So start.